Good morning. Good morning. Um, Sally, while you're there, could you hand me my sermon, which is right there? <laughs> we might want that in a few minutes. But uh, Thank you. Or we might not want it in a few minutes. I don't know. <laughs> good morning and welcome. It's good to see you, and happy second Sunday of Easter. And we are still working with technology. There, um, can you mute your computer itself? The bandwidth made it strange last week, but we increased our speed, our internet speed, so we're hoping that that helps us with the live stream. And still complicated and... and uh, working out the bugs of being having it all here instead of all at Becky's house. So uh, we can be patient and helpful. And I'm hoping that once we get this established and working well, we can turn off this, at least one of the screens so that y'all focus this way, <laughs> like here, so that if we turn off the screen, um, particularly during like when it's not liturgy, uh, we can, it'll help us to refocus. A little bit. So we're working on all of those things. And yes, Lynn, I do have a pair of glasses here, so we're all good. Um, Lynn and I are sharing glasses back and forth a little bit today. This is where I would normally invite you, if we were all in normal time, to greet each other. So let's just like look around, say hello. There's some new folks today. It's good to see you. It's good to see some folks back. And uh, this is the Sunday, actually one of the Sundays they call Canon Sunday, uh, traditionally, and you can shoot off a cannon from the pulpit and hit no one the Sunday after e Christmas and after Easter. That's the traditional reason that pastors call it Canon Sunday. It has nothing to do with the canon, which is the Bible. Um, so we, we always call it that, but it's, we have quite a few of us here today, and it's good to see you, and it's good to see the folks that are worshiping online. I love that we are holding on to this technology and this option for us. Next, we'll be working on the camera that can turn and zoom and do those kinds of things, and that will be helpful to us as well. So I'd like to invite you to, uh, if you're able to do so comfortably here, stand and responsively join me with the call to worship. Come to worship Jesus Christ, risen forever. Come to rejoice in the life born out of death. Come to grasp hope and in the face of fear. Come to find forgiveness for your sins. Come to release your doubts into the very presence of God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. And you may be seated. Yes. <laughs> I dance in the morning when the world has begun And I danced in the moon and the stars and the sun And I came down from heaven and I danced on the earth It's 
one of my favorite hymns, and I love it for the Easter tide. And we went from good to good in, in our verses. Maybe good to better. Confident of God's unending grace, which surrounds us in every moment, we know the constant love of God. And let us come together for our time of confession, beginning with just a moment for silent prayer. Let us pray. Joining together. Gracious God, we confess our slowness to embrace you. You offer springtime to our souls, but we prefer the winter of coldness and indifference. We continue to despair and rather than rejoicing in knowing you love us. We forget that we have been baptized into death and resurrection of Christ. Afraid to die, we cannot receive new life. Rejoicing that you forgive us, we pray these things to you with the confidence of your children. Amen. God sent Jesus not to judge us, but to save us. God accepts both our courage and our fears. In the name of Christ, we are forgiven. We dare to accept the gift of a new beginning.
them his hands and his side and the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord and Jesus said to them peace be with you as the father has sent me so I send you and when he said this he breathed onto them and said receive the Holy Spirit if you forgive the sins of any they are forgiven them if you retain the sins of any they are retained but Thomas called the twin who was not with them not with the twelve when Jesus came to them. So the other disciples told him, we've seen the Lord. And he said to them, unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house and Thomas was with them. And although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hand. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. And Thomas answered him, my Lord and my God. And Jesus said to him, you have believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. So you may come to believe in his name. Here ends the lesson. There is a lot in this text. Uh, and there are many, many different um, sermons. There's the peace sermon. Jesus says, I don't know how many times, peace I give to you. And always one of my my favorite texts. And then there is the uh, Thomas who doesn't believe, and Jesus shows him. So there's, there's the blessing of those who believe without seeing, and then there are those who see. Now, we kind of give Thomas a bad rap. I kind of want to talk about him a little bit today. Um, you know, the other disciples saw Jesus and believed, and then told Thomas about it, but then gave Thomas a bad rap because he didn't believe, but he, they all saw. They kind of imply that he should believe without seeing, but they all saw. Uh, it wasn't like they believed without seeing. They saw Jesus. So Jesus gives Thomas this moment where he, he comes back and, and shows him so that he can be kind of on the same playing field. But he also says, blessed are they who believe without seeing. So, I have several thoughts here. First of all, whether your faith is that there is a God or isn't a God, if you have, don't have any doubts about whatever it is you believe, I think you might be asleep <laughs> or not telling yourself the truth about what we believe. We go through these phases in our lives. Doubts uh, are the ants in the pants of faith. 
They keep us awake, they keep us moving, and it's still one of my favorite ways to understand. Frederick Buechner say, uh, says it, and I, and I think that that's where I got it from way back when, when I, and Frederick Buechner's still alive. He is a, a pastor, but he's also a writer. And um, I, he said, he, he has this whole piece about defining this passage in the Doubting Thomas and says, you know, it's the ants in the pants of faith without doubts. We're, we don't get stirred up. We don't get uh, moving and thinking. I had a teacher as a kid, well, I had several teachers, who used to tell me I had ants in my pants. And uh, I, uh, my husband, you, can you just watch the long movies? Okay, on Zoom meetings, I'm, I mean, the only reason I do my fingernails is because it gives me something to do while I'm sitting still on a long Zoom meeting. So maybe at Presbytery meetings, I would could force myself to stay in my seat and in a way the ants disappeared but then well at least I was sitting still I believe that there is least a few of you who understand and Parents, you know something different. I know. I know parent and teacher makes it a strange like <laughs> who can't sit still in congregation. I get it. being able to sit still. And I predict that there are okay. Well, I'm an adult now. I have to stay focused. It's very, but ants in the pants, daydreaming, actually are the things of creativity and genius, as I like to think of it. Also, these are the things of a living faith. People of great faith most often are people who have doubted in their lifetime. If you read and study people like Mother Teresa, you find that she just held on because she had an experience of God and she had to make that last her lifetime. But it wasn't that she never questioned or never struggled. People of great faith struggle. From time to time, we cry out within ourselves, where are you, God? In today's language, we might pause from our struggles long enough to say, really? Really, God? Really? In religious circles, I found that many times those who question are often feel guilty or chastised. Are accused of not having enough faith by their religious friends. I've heard from many folks about my minister, is us, if we're honest with ourselves, have questions. Question, we just move along, touting the sayings, quoting the scripture. And I'm not really sure that this helps with the struggles in life. It leaves us to blame God for most things, or use that saying that I completely have to tell you I despise, declares that only, God only gives us what we can handle. Well, folks, there's a lot of stuff we just can't handle. It's hard. But the way we handle it is with one another and with God. It's not that God gives it to us so that we can handle it and suck it up. Stuff of human life happens. It's part of free will. God gave us free will. We make some choices. And terrible things happen and accidents happen. And horrible things. 
the good news is we have God journeying with us and us journeying with one another. God can and does walk with us through the terrible things of life. God also walks with us through the joys. Listen, we can learn something from Thomas. Is in asking the question, needing to see, perhaps even discover some of how God is leading us in those moments. There are times we think we believe nothing, and there are times there are times when we know exactly what to believe. There was a time I'll share with you. I won't read all this, and I'll digress for a minute. But there was a time in ministry in my world when I didn't know what to believe. I, I felt like, can this all be real? Can this all be, if studying science, where, where is the factual in all, all of this spiritual stuff? What was true and what is always true if we follow Christ's teachings are the positive ethics and the love. So in those moments when you feel like, I don't feel God, I don't know what's happening here, but I don't feel the Holy Spirit, grab on to what you know to be true. The lessons in Scripture that Jesus teaches us teach us how to live a better life and teach us how to care for one another. That is always true. So even when we feel like Thomas or completely don't know what we believe, we can grab onto those moments and know that those moments can carry us through months. We're sure there's a God. And I prayed anyhow. I eventually found my way back, but there are times in life when we all have doubts, when we all have fears, when we all have questions. We can say it out loud. It's okay to say it out loud. And we will find our way if we hold on to what we know to be true. Hold on to each other. That is something God gave us that's amazing. One another. In your moment of question, that's not the time to stop going to church because the people are what help us and strengthen us. So even in a time when we've been worshiping online, we still have that connection. We still have each other. That's the time to maybe even hold on more when we're not physically with each other is to hold on tighter to one another, calling each other, talking in different ways. I have to decide if there's anything else in here I want to share with you. <laughs> I think um, it's important to know that we're not here in church because we have the answers. We are here to grow in relationship with God and with one another. This is what we do. We're not here to tell people what they must believe to get into heaven. God takes care of that for us. We are here to grow in relationship with God and with one another. We're here to openly journey with each other. We may all have different questions, but it doesn't make us heretics or stupid or bad Christians or bad people for that matter. Maybe we find the answers for one another that we are alive and growing with God. We also have to remember that it's not necessary to all have the same exact relationship with God. It might look a little different for each one of us. We can all love God and all hear God speaking to us in different ways. This is why we have to listen openly in life. To, to others, not just people that 
are in your worshiping community, but people even outside your worshiping community. Listen openly and learn. The best way to grow in our faith may be to hear how God speaks to someone else. It doesn't have to change my faith to listen to learn about how someone of another faith experiences God. It can help my faith grow to listen to how they experience God. While Frederick Buechner looks at our doubts as the ants in the pants that keep our faith growing and alive, another wonderful way to look at it is fleas. There is another author who, instead of ants in the pants, says it's the fleas of our faith that are really important, the fleas that keep us agitated. David Harum claimed that a reasonable amount of fleas is good for a dog. It keeps him from brooding over being a dog. In that same vein, Sir Francis Galton, the great English scientist of the 19th century, wrote, well-washed and well-combed domestic doll dogs grow dull. Personally, I like my dogs without fleas, but he says they miss the stimulus of the fleas. Obviously, the flea carried quite a quality. Being lauded here is that tiny creature, if you can look at it, is able to take its otherwise self-satisfied snoozing host and irritate it into attention. So the smallest thing can irritate us. It's a great illustration, really, into attention. We all need fleas. Small little outside agitators that keep us from being maybe complacent or plotting, boring in life. I don't really love the fleas most of the time, but if I take this perspective and look at the fleas, the agitations in life, and say, what can I grow from, from this? It's a different perspective. Maybe Thomas had an amount of fleas. We have to doubt in life. It's a part of being human. It's a part of free will. It's also what keeps us from becoming stagnant, boring. In my recollection, stagnant water doesn't smell very good, so I don't want to be stagnant. And it's not useful for anything. It doesn't quench a thirst. Think of all the great people biblical characters, scientists, philosophers, theologians, who affirmed doubt, had doubts and questions, then we too, like them, can be people of greatness, right? And are people of greatness. To doubt is to be alive. God gave us our minds, our ability to think, reason, our ability to have free will. We wonder many things. The only time this is a problem is when we dwell so heavily on our doubts that we think we're alone and we have fear and we become depressed because we think we're the only ones. And we can become hopeless. We have to share. We are together in life. We have to share the struggle as Thomas did with Christ. And oftentimes the answers provided, just like Christ provided the answer for Thomas. He didn't turn him away. He showed him. We are to touch one another. If you question ever people who doubted, I, wanna, I think I have a little, yeah, there's a little bit of scripture that you can turn to. If somebody tells you or implies to you that doubting is bad or questioning is bad, Questioning God is bad. Think of some of the most faithful people in Scripture. Sarah laughed hysterically with doubt when God promised her a child in her old age. Jonah's faith was so doubt-infested that he tried to run away from his mission to Nineveh. Jesus' disciples were constantly doubting, despite the fact that they were witnesses, eyewitnesses, to remarkable power of Jesus' command. They still panicked and screamed at him, Teacher, you don't care if we're about to perish. Remember that from the boat? Jesus was peacefully napping through a storm. Luke records that after the resurrection, these same disciples disbelieved for joy and wonder. We're in good company when we have our questions, aren't we? 
Jesus himself, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? We're in good company. No, we don't always find all the answers we think we want. But together we find some of them. And together our doubts are validated. Just as Jesus did not ridicule or scold Thomas for his doubts, neither are we ridiculed or scolded. And perhaps most importantly, we're not alone and we grow in relationship through those very doubts. Let us pray. Loving and gracious God, we thank you for your word to us this day. And while this scripture is filled with so many things, today we have folked our questions amidst our doubts, and we pray that you will help us to always know your grace and your love and your presence. Help us to hear your voice as we struggle. Help us to reach out to one another and find our way. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. There are a few... Um, on Communion Sunday, we do an, <clears throat> an interesting thing in that we don't have the pastoral prayer and Lord's Prayer. I'm going to add it. I'm going to just add the pastoral prayer back in right here. I would like for us to pray for um, someone who is struggling with addiction. I would like for us to pray for uh, Roger. He did call. Um, Roger McWayne, and he, he calls us every day, Derek, so it's good. At, at least we keep in touch, right? Um, so uh, Roger is, is in the hospital here. His mom, he asked us to pray for, who lives in Canada. Her, she lived with a, in, a, in a home with a group of ladies, and they no longer uh, have that home. She's now in an apartment on her own, <clears throat> and she, uh, he's concerned for her. She needs to find another place to live where she's uh, safely with the group of, of other ladies to, to be with at this time in her life. So he asks us to pray for his mom uh, and for him as he continues uh, to heal and uh, struggle with his own illnesses. Are there other prayers this morning that we want to specifically draw some attention to? Becky, I'm praying that your back feels better. Becky has a bad back, and it's very hard. So pray for Becky. Yes, Continued prayers for Jimmy. Where is Jimmy right now, Val? Okay. Okay. We continue to pray for Jimmy and that he will maybe find his way back to some rehab um, to get better. So Val's cousin Jimmy. Other, anything else to add today? Let's turn our hearts and minds to God in prayer. Loving and gracious God, you've heard our prayers, both spoken and unspoken this morning. And we bring to you all of the burdens that we feel, all of our fears, all of our angst. We pray for your guidance. We pray for your, your guidance in the lives of those whom we love. May your spirit inspire and bring new understanding, greater understanding greater wisdom. God, may you help us to live each day doing the things that we can and finding ways to let go of the things that we can't control or change. Help us to know your presence and to know your peace. We pray that the world will soon find its way through a difficult time of pandemic and also learn ways of peace, beating our swords into plowshares, holding on to one another. We pray these things together using the prayer that your son, our Lord, taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from all. For is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We
we have, <coughs> excuse me, we have offering plates at each entrance, and we uh, invite you to uh, make contributions to the church in that way to help the church in all that it does. Either coming or going, either one. And you may also make contributions through the church website. If you would go to fpcogginsburg.com and follow the donate links, it will tell you exactly what to do as you go. Also, um, you can use the snail mail, uh, 311 Franklin Street, Ogdensburg, New York. Let's pray together our prayer of dedication. <laughs> Gracious God, you breathe your life into us through the gift of Jesus, the power of the Spirit. This is empowers us to loosen our resistance to all others. We express our gratitude by offering these gifts in the service of our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I'm looking to see what I'm looking at with the. This is what will improve next, I promise. <laughs> they make one that's remote and you can make it turn and zoom in where you want it without having to <clears throat> move around. We are coming to the. <laughs> and I did not print out the uh, service of communion for myself. So I'm looking for a little yellow book. Somebody have one somewhere? Becky's got one. Oh, Rhonda's got one. You got one. Thank you. We did away with these for the congregation. And I'm needing one for myself. I believe that I have found the right one. Oh. Is this the... Yes. <clears throat> Join me responsively as we come to the Lord's table. This is not my table. This is not the church's table, but this is the Lord's table. And when we come together from wherever we are, even from our homes, to this table... We come together and celebrate with Christ. The table is now prepared for us. And we're invited to share in the feast of God's presence, celebrating here and now all that is meant by being alive. The spirit of God moves in and through each of us in every age, in every corner of the earth, calling people to renew their hope and joy. At this, At this table, table, we celebrate, we celebrate Jesus, Jesus, who touched, who touched our, our brokenness, brokenness with, with his, his life. life who gathers us together, together inside, inside and out. We give, we give ourselves, ourselves to that wholeness, moving, moving from, from hurt to happiness, from darkness, darkness to light, filling our, our lives with love, love laughter, and, and each other, joining Join with all created things, things to say, holy are you, are you, O God. God be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to God. Let us thank God. It is good to thank God. Holy are you, O God, for your mercy is endless. You have filled all creation with light and life. Your glory stretches through the heavens. It was you who led Abraham and Sarah to the land of promise and who saved your people from the desert of bitter tears, who called them to the land of the living. It was you who blessed Miriam and David when they danced and sang in holy places and through Jesus Christ, you taught us to celebrate. Those who were blind saw the son of your goodness, the crippled leapt for joy, and those who were locked in the prison of their fears were given the freedom to love. Your, your spirit, spirit calls us now, in this place, place to gather all people into our celebration, to, to help the lame and the blind, to, to wipe away tears with an outstretched hand. The bread of love, the cup of joy, stand as reminders that miracles and faith and risk continue to happen. In thanksgiving and remembrance, we ask that you bless this bread and cup so that in sharing them together, we shall be your church. We pray these things again together in the one voice, using the prayer that your Son, our Lord, taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, 
thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not to temptation, but to deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Jesus was traveling along the road, as were the disciples, the road to Emmaus. And when Jesus met up with the disciples, they didn't recognize him as he walked with them along the way. They didn't know who he was. And as he shared stories and talked with them, and their hearts were set ablaze. And then they got to the place where they were going, and they sat down to celebrate meal together. And Jesus took bread, and he broke it, saying, This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And their eyes were opened, and they recognized him in that moment. In the same way, let our eyes be open. Let us together share in the bread of life. In the same way as with the bread after supper, Jesus took the cup and he said, this cup stands for the new covenant, which is sealed in my blood. As often as you drink of this, do so remembering me. Together, we share in the cup of salvation. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Each time we come to this table, we proclaim Christ's life, death, and resurrection until he comes again. Let us join together in the prayer of thanksgiving. We give thanks, O God, because in your own free gift of love, you have reached out to us. You have refreshed us at your table touched our our deepest deepest needs, and and called us to a life shared in memory and hope. Send us forth with courage and joy in the name of Jesus Christ, that we too may become bread and peace for one another and the world. Amen. ready to sing. (laughs) 
I invite you, if you're able to do so comfortably, to stand for the charge and benediction. Yes, announcements. Yes. Yeah. Knitting group has started again. We would love to have you come and join us. We're this. It's appropriately and just having a great time we meet. I'll teach you if you want to learn. So for one feels fascinated. So if you want to place a food sense like order, that's Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday? Yes, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday from eleven to three. Great. Okay. Anything else? So, go ahead and doubt, go ahead and struggle, go ahead and grow, but know that you're not alone, and we do this together, and Jesus meets us wherever we are. Now may the love of God, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and always. Amen. Amen.